it's Morgan here with my channel and today I'm going to be talking about week nine of pregnancy and also weak points. So let's dive into this. Today is officially my turnover into week nine of pregnancy. I feel like I've not taking a full turn <laughs> um, from the nausea and the vomiting, but a little bit. So I talked about in my last video how I've been taking the medicine Bone Gesta, and I've been taking it nightly now, and it's, I still have nausea, I'll be very honest about that, but the vomiting incidences have decreased. So that's amazing. I still have some bad days, but for overall, I will say that this last week I've had more good days. So. I wanted to update with that and just tell you guys where I've been, but I wanted to talk about some things I've been learning in this last week with my bad days, okay? And I'm calling it weak points. So I think I, I've talked before on my channel about how much I've embraced minimalism and letting go of a lot of excess stuff in our house and how with three kids and now this is the fourth one on the way, it's just impossible to maintain a lot of stuff and keep my sanity levels <laughs> at, a, at a good place um, and just, you know, function. And how the more stuff we've gotten rid of, the better I can function, the better um, mom I can be, the better I can be at work, all of, all of the different aspects of life. So for me, this week and the week before, when I've hit this phase of pregnancy where I am fatigued at times, where I am nauseous, I discover what is still the weak points in our life. The areas that when you don't feel well, they just get let go. Um, or it's really hard to maintain them and you can see where your greatest struggles are. So, and I know there's people that have suffered from different things in this past year and it may have revealed some places that are just, when you don't feel well, they just go to chaos in your house. Um, so I, to be completely honest, I am filming in our front room and look at one of these weak points behind me, okay? <laughs> I have an entire floor of uh, clothing here. It's all my kids' clothes that I need to sort and get put away. And this is an area that's a weak point is laundry. Uh, the stairs in my home where we pile things that are from downstairs that need to go get put away. This can become a weak point. Real moment of truth, <laughs> the cursed ottoman. This is a place, we have like an ottoman down here in our seating area, and this is a place where things get piled when stuff comes in my home and I don't really like know what to do with it. Somebody just donated a bunch of books to our library. This is um, a car seat. Uh, it's like a protector of your car seats that go under them and I washed it, so I need to put that away. This is my desk and working area for school, so it gets kind of messy. It's a weak point. This area is a weak point. However, the living room, for the most part, except for a laundry basket, is not a weak point because most of it's been simplified, although there's some uh, bags down there that have got to get put away. I just bought a shower gift for my sister-in-law. So I've just given you a very honest and open look through most of my house where you can see what I'm calling weak points, that when I'm not feeling well or I can't keep up with stuff, those are the spaces that start to overflow. Those are the spaces that get hard to manage. And you may see this, and it's not a comparison video. I'm not trying to make you feel bad about your home if it's worse or better. It's not to compare. It's just to tell you kind of what minimalism has done in my life and how I embrace it. So for me, those spaces I just showed you guys are an indicator to me. They are an indicator if the volume of stuff in our home has become too much for me to handle, especially, right, there's times when we're feeling good where we can handle a lot of stuff. Maybe we can handle all the inventory coming into our homes. Maybe we can put it away. Maybe we can have cleaning spurts. But when I have days where I don't feel well and I'm just sick and I'm laid up on the couch, those areas are the places that overflow even though I've minimalized our house. And so it lets me know 
again, minimalism is a process. You're never like fully done. It reminds me that maybe my inventory for this season of my life right now is too much. It's more than I can handle. It's more than I can keep up with. And for anybody that might think this, my husband is amazing. Um, these areas that I'm showing you, he is helping as much as he can to try and, you know, keep that picked up, put away, help with the kids. He's been helping with dinners. Um, honestly, the one area I didn't really have to show you, I could, but it's like spotless right now is our kitchen because that's an area I have not been able to maintain at all. That's a complete weak point because right now with my nausea, like usually food smells and things in the kitchen trigger me. So I can't even go in there, but my husband has taken on dishes and cleaning and all of that in that space. So he is golden there, let me just say that. But the rest of the house, the places that normally I look to, to manage or just kind of, you know, go through like laundry, those are the areas that are overflowing. Those are the areas that are showing me I have some weak points. And so what this does is it sets me on a path to pursue some minimalism in these areas. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to go through, um, and I won't be able to do all the weak points, okay? <laughs> I have too many right now. But the one that seems to be a common denominator is clothing. It seems like in our house, as we transition from one season to the next, we're going out of winter and now into spring. The weather's getting warmer here. We're having sunny days. That this is the time now where I need to look at that weak point. I've got too many clothes in my wardrobe. I think I need to put some things away from winter. I'm also starting to pull out some maternity stuff and look through my storage of that. And I need to, I need to really reevaluate because when I start to get too many clothes, that's where my piles overflow. They get built up in my room and you don't have that simple feel, that manageable feel that you're going for. I also need to go through my kids' clothes. <laughs> they have so much here on the on the ground, all this stuff we've gotta go through. We need to figure out what to keep in their drawers. So my rule of thumb is usually for this spring, summer range, I want to minimize their clothes to like, a few main outfits, like maybe five full outfits, five shirts, five pants. For the baby, I have more because she runs her outfits more frequently. <laughs> she gets into dirt and things like that. So that's my aim and that's how I'm trying to minimize our load because we've had a lot incoming. So I'm gonna go through all of this today and I'm just gonna try and sort it and figure out what we need to do. All right, so we're in my kid's room. Let me turn off. <laughs> their sound machine so it's not in the background we forget sometimes that it just plays all day uh so i figured i would just show you guys the process of going through their clothes and getting things just sorted again their room is not too bad um uh, because we took almost all toys and things like that out of this room we keep all of that in the basement we do not let them have that stuff in their room so that helps a lot however i'll show you guys so some of the little toys from the basement, this is like a little pancake set, food set. <laughs> some of these things navigate up here, especially when mom's not feeling good or can't like manage certain things. So luckily they brought up a bucket too. So I'm just gonna throw all the toys and things that should not be in this room. We'll go in here. Okay, so I'll pick up a few of those things. And then here's my big step that I do when I'm simplifying um, wardrobe is I pull everything out. This is, I think that's like the Marie Kondo method and some other organizers talk about it. It is so important because you need to see the sheer volume of the stuff that your kids have. <laughs> we don't often think it's a lot till we see it. So I brought the whole clothes basket of clean clothes from downstairs. I've got that up here. Our daughter spent the night with grandma. So, um, this weekend, so we've got to unpack her suitcase, but luckily grandma washes those clothes. So that's going to come out here and I'm going to pull everything out of their drawers. Absolutely everything. And then I'm going to sort it and I'm going to minimize it to what is now manageable for our family 
And again, guys, I, I get it. I understand having extra things on hand and how maybe some of you can manage a large wardrobe for your kids. But the more kids you have, like, you've got to think, what are your weak spots? And for me, it may not be the same for everybody, but for me, it's laundry and clothes and getting to that stuff. When I don't feel good, those are the things that pile up. So if the rest of my house is more manageable now because of minimalism, it only makes sense that I would do this with clothes as well. So I'm gonna kind of give you guys some sped up footage so you don't have to sit through all of it, but I'm gonna pull everything out and we're, we're gonna do this today. I'm gonna minimalize their wardrobe. Okay, so I'm just checking out their closet real quick so that you guys can see like there's hardly anything in here. Um, I only hang a few of like the really nice dresses and that's it. The rest goes in their dresser. So I have a couple Halloween costumes back here. Honestly, this one my son was for Halloween. I'm going to take this downstairs. I have like a set of those that I'm looking to sell this year. I've kind of got them set aside for October. Honestly, as I'm saying this, in this season, I don't have time to wait till October and sell this. Now that I'm thinking about it, the baby is going to be born. October 12th is the due date. It'll be around there. Who's got time to sell this stuff then? <laughs> I don't. Um, so I am going to go ahead and take this off and put it in a donate pile because this is a weak spot. Trying to wait, trying to get money out of this. It's not worth it. It's not worth my time. So there you go, guys. I'm thinking through my process right now. Like there's a part of us that likes to think, oh, I'll wait or I'll, I'll see if someone can use that or sell it. No, I'm going to put it in the donate pile. Somebody will find this and be like, that's awesome. I scored the most amazing find at a donated place and that's for them. So giveaway pile. <laughs> I, again, this is another great example. This is a shirt. My son, I feel like he only got to wear it like once or twice. He's grown out of it. He it's, it's, I'm not saving it for, the thing is, even if this baby that we're going to have is a boy, I am not storing this for all the years it would take to get him to be this size. So this is going in donate because some other little boy can use that right now. literally have a mountain of clothes. <laughs> Seriously, this is too many, too much for two kids. Now, mind you, this is every piece of clothing in their wardrobe, but this is why we pull it all out because this explains why we haven't been able to keep up with laundry. So time to sort through this. going through all my kids stuff this is the get rid of pile <laughs> can you believe this <laughs> it's like ridiculous um and honestly most of it was just finding it was the wrong size like my son had stuff in here that was all small and he wears a large like I guess it's just been a while since I've gone through his drawer I didn't realize it had been that long and so this makes sense of why this was a weak spot in our house and why there was overflow because what I'm going to do, I'm going to bag all this up and send it to the donation center. Um, if you're watching this video, I probably won't get there till the end of the week. So if you have a young boy who wears the size small, let me know. <laughs> um, any of my local friends and I will, I will send all of this to you. Honestly, half of it, like even little cute underwear, little boy's underwear. But like, these are brand new. Like I had bought him stuff that he just never even cracked open. So this is going goodbye. Okay, now let's come over and look at the final piles that I sorted for my kids. So this, kind of put this right here. 
Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so this is what's going back in their drawers. Um, it's a lot more manageable. I can see exactly what their inventory was. So for example, I learned that this pile right here is all the shirts my daughter has for summer. Like she has three. <laughs> she has three dressy shirts and three regular shirts. This is probably not enough. I know now when I go shopping that like I need to target this. I need to maybe get two more um, play shirts for her so she has a complete collection. However, when I went through her pants, these are all of her winter pants. And honestly, now because it's summer, I'm going to go put a lot of these in storage for Eden, the younger one, who these will get passed down to next year. So I do have storage boxes in their rooms that I put the different um, clothes to use for hand-me-downs for the ones that will get used. So I'm going to pull these out of circulation and I will probably leave out, I'd say I will leave out one pair of jeans and one pair of um, like the comfy ones for the few cool days we're still gonna have. I know it's not 100% turn in the weather. Actually, I might leave two pairs of jeans, there we go. <laughs> so she's got three potential pants that she can still wear. But for the hot days where it's still been warm out, I saw that she literally has um, three pairs of shorts, that's it. So I kinda see there, we need a little bit more inventory on that. So this is just so revealing to me. Um, another very revealing thing is after I went through all my son's underwear and saw how much doesn't really fit, I had been noticing they looked a little tight on him lately. He technically has two that are the right size. That is ridiculous. So I need to go to the store. I need to buy him some more of that. However, he has tons of shorts. This pile over here was shorts. So I kind of uh, sifted through and donated some that were a little smaller. His shirts, however... They're probably good. He's got about six or seven shirts there piled up. I think that'll be good. I also sorted out some of their pajamas. Like I tossed some of um, my son's, kind of go back to my pile over here. So let me tell you about purchase regrets, right? I bought these like brand new for my son in winter, these Minecraft pajamas. They were a little too big and so he he wore them for a little bit and then he stopped wearing them and he's never touched them since because honestly he likes to sleep in his boxers, not PJs. And they're going to be too small by next winter. So there's a part of us, right, that likes to hold on to this. Like, hey, I paid money for this. My son only wore it a couple times. Like, I want to keep it in his drawer just in case. No, he's not going to wear it. So I got to let it go. And guys, just I'm giving you permission. Let it go. <laughs> Push your piles of stuff out the door. Because the thing is, and my point with this video, there are weak spots. And when we are down or struggling, these weak spots really show and they're hard. But even when you're good and everything in life is going good, if you can prune out these weak spots, your day-to-day -day functions so much better. Like now I know that when my kids come in their room, they will have their few selections to pick from in the drawers. And the thing is, if, if they pulled these out of their drawers and they ended up on the floor or made a mess, there is not so much inventory here that I am going to feel overwhelmed, right? Like <laughs> if my daughter pulled every single piece of clothing out of her dresser right now, I'm training them not to do that kind of stuff. But if she did and it was all on the floor, this is not that bad. I can handle this. This pile, however... If I walked in here <laughs> and this, all of this, plus all of that, um, which half of it is, or more than half, is stuff they're not even wearing. Like, why? Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we keep this much inventory in our homes? It's overwhelming for you as a mom. And if you're overwhelmed with the thought of even starting this, starting organizing this, maybe pick something else to organize. Pick a different weak spot. Or if you have more than one kid, pick one kid at a time. Pull out all the clothes for one kid. It helps, honestly, that I did this right now while they're not home. I personally, as a mom, recommend don't get your kids input. <laughs> I mean, we kind of know what they wear and what they don't wear. And I mean, if you have older kids, yes, you're going to want their input. But my kids are still young. I can kind of pick their wardrobe choices. So 
Anyways, I'm gonna work on putting this back in the dresser and that's all I have for today is just today, minimize those weak spots. I am giving you permission. Go get rid of stuff. I mean it, go do it right now. Thank you guys for watching and checking in with me on week nine. Hope you have a great day.